Everybody, welcome to the Gentle Art Podcast with Gene Dunn. Uh, I have the privilege of being with Shihan Christine Bannon Rodriguez today. And uh, Shihan, I, I just want to say, like, I got to get this out of the way. I'm like, <laughs> I don't even know where to start. I'm, I'm such a big, not just fan, but I'm in awe of of you as a martial artist. And I was telling the producer. Before, I got here a half hour early. I'm never early for the podcast, and I've been <laughs> I've been anticipating this goal for the for a week now. And I'm sitting here going like, you know, she's everything I wanted to be in the martial arts and more. Like, and I just I, I I'm like so inspired to be on the phone with you. So thank you very much for coming on the show. And uh, enough with me fanboying, fanboy. Well. It's it's quite an honor to be on the show with you as well. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I want to just give a little background for the listeners. Um, and and I'm, I'm on your wiki page, and it's pretty amazing. So nine world championships and three-time world titles at Waco. Yes? Yes. And then also the stunt, the stunt woman for, for the Karate Kid 3. Uh, Karate Kid Four, with the one with Hillary Swank. Yeah, yeah, and then also, I, 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 had, this had slipped my mind, but you were on WMAC Masters, correct? Yes. Oh my gosh, yep. I, it was that was such a great show. <laughs> it was, it was, I, I, it was pretty cool, you know, working with all uh, fellow martial artists, you know. So it, it was, it was a lot of fun, and we did two seasons of that, and. I wish they continued it. <laughs> you know, I, I remember I was working with Herb Perez. I was that like in 90, from like 1990 to 1994, I was going down to uh, Sifu Paul Vizio's and mm -hmm. Perez was his, his student and I was working towards the world championships uh, and the traditional karate scene. And he was an, he was just incredible like he was an amazing fighter and yes. i remember like i remember him telling us about uh the the show and him like being olympia or olympus or what i forgot his character's name and then watching it was it was an ex it was an excellent show what what was it like working with akeem alston right right and then yes. and then herb and all those people it was just a lot of fun. Some of them I knew very well from the sport karate circuit. Yeah. And then others, you know, um, you know, well, Herb, I didn't know from sport karate, but, you know, we worked together with, with Macho. And oh, right. Yeah. And, um, you know, so some of them I, I never really knew that well until we got on the show, but a lot of them I did know. And it, it was very, very cool. And, and, you know, a lot of people don't know that the actual, um, when you see the ninjas that were doing the, the attacks in, in the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. So those those ninjas, you know, if, if you know, me and Bridget Riley were the star sh fighters of the day and we were fighting, it was everybody else that was playing the ninjas. Oh, so, uh, wait, they doubled as the ninjas? Yeah, I mean, we did have some, <laughs> we did have some extras that, you know, we're just stunt people that just did the ninja work, but a lot of us filled in if we weren't actually doing our fight on that day. Wow. So, yeah, so, you know, when when you're dealing with, um, you know, that talent as, as your other stunt people there, but the funny thing was when Hakeem and those guys would um, have their fights and, you know, I'd have the black mask on and everything else, I mean, they didn't know the difference between me and a guy. I mean, really. Oh, no. You know, oh. All of a sudden, I'd be catching these shots. <laughs> I'd be catching these shots. And I remember Hakeem hit me with one of those long leg axe kicks, and I took my mask off, and I'm like, <laughs> Hakeem, thanks. Please you know? don't kill me. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, 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 my, I, I came on to the point karate circuit right after he left, and everybody, everybody was talking about him. Like, yes. it, you know, he was a phenomenal athlete and great competitor. I never met him, but like, I, 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 one of the reasons I watched the show was for you and, and 
just to see that level of of karate was amazing to me and 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 herb of course mr perez but also to see him because i i never saw him fight and i just was everybody was talking about him and uh and yeah he was amazing really great yes um so i you know i i i want to give a little pretext so in 1993 i'm i win i win every traditional karate tournament in this country and and then i go to the waco worlds in atlantic city and i go there to see you and alfie lewis and i i was pretty impressed by alfie lewis but then i remember watching you in the finals on stage and couldn't actually I, I couldn't actually comprehend what I was watching. Like the, the level of karate, like I saw you, I saw you chase this girl across the ring with an ax kick that she had, <laughs> she, she had no recourse. She had nothing, she had nothing for it. And I just remember thinking like, oh, that person is a really high level martial arts. You, you, you was like really high level. So I, 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 I know I said I wasn't going to fanboy anymore, but I, you know, I just want to say like, that was amazing for me. I was, you know, 23 years old and you so inspired me. Like I, I, it was something like I, I, it wasn't attainable for me exactly, but it was something for me to kind of strive for. So that was really, really great. Like my, my all time, one of my all time best, you know, martial arts, ex, martial arts experiences. Um, can we talk about like what age you were when you got into karate and what brought you to karate? Sure, sure. Um, um, I'm surprised. I, I never knew you were actually at that world championships, but that, that's very cool. <laughs> um, I, uh, I got involved really just as an after school activity. Um, my parents were very strict. So if it was a school night, you're not going out, uh -huh. <laughs> um, you know, and, unless it was, a sporting event or a school event or something like that. Sure. So, you know, it was, uh, so I didn't really get a chance to hang out with my friends too much on, on a weekday. So one of my girlfriends and I had done everything. I, I did figure skating. I did, um, gymnastics. I played basketball. I played softball, um, just about everything under the sun I tried. And, you know, I'm somewhat athletic but I, I wasn't like a star player you know uh -huh. so it was nothing that i had done since you know some some people start sports when they're very very young and you know by the time they're 10 they're the superstars they're world you know, class I was, right yeah i was just average you know and and nothing really i had fun but nothing that really hit me and then a girl girlfriend of mine said oh my brother's taking karate at this place that's not far from my house you know do you want to come with me and try it you know and I was like, yeah, I'll try it, you know, and I was like, you know, it's a couple nights a week. I can, you know, get out and, and see my friends and, and right. you know, I just figured out oh, something else. I'll, I'll try it. Yeah, sure. And my husband, um, my husband now, but, you know, he, he was, Don Rodriguez was um, the owner of the school, but it wasn't like a commercial school. It was actually behind the bake like it was a bakery by day <laughs> oh that, wow you know so at in the back of the bakery there was space that they didn't really use they only use that like storefront area and so the back of the bakery is what we we used at nighttime did it smell like bread <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh yeah so so you just you you go to karate because it was an activity to kind of get out of the house and and it and socialize with friends and then and how old are you are you in your are you a teenager at this point yeah so i was 13 at the time uh-huh and so do you teach to karate immediately how how does it like how does it go from you being what i heard you say an average athlete to you kind of being in love with karate I, those are my words but i'm assuming that's what happens Yes. Um, well, within a year, she ended up quitting. Um, oh, you know, what just wasn't her cup of tea. Uh -huh. And and I just loved it even more, you know, the more I went. And it was kind of like, um, you know, it was a private school. It, it wasn't a commercial school. And right. you could go back then. I think classes were like an hour and a half or two hours That's long, right. That's and, right. That's right. And you could go as many times a week during the week as you wanted to. So I would go four nights a week. And, 
and I just really loved it. And um, so, again, my husband, not husband at the time, but my instructor at the time was promoting his first tournament and, you know, said we're all competing there. So, you know, I went to my first tournament as an orange belt. Um, and it was it was crazy because I was only 13 at the time, but they didn't have the rules like right now. If you were 13, there's no way you could go against an adult. Right. Um, you know, with the liabilities and the the rules now. But back then, I would I competed. I, they had like Pee Wee and mini, mini Pee Wee and Junior Division, and I competed in the Junior Division in the forms forms division. So I was against the boys. Right. But 13 year old boys, you know, some of them could be my size, and some of them. My could size. Be peeking at, yeah. <laughs> you know, so so he's like, I think you're better off going in the women's for, for fighting. Wow. So I was like, okay, you know, so I was 13 and just an orange belt, and the women's was all ranks. So I don't know all if you All the way remember. up to black belt? Yeah. Wow. So I don't know if you remember Larry Kelly, um, God rest his soul, he, you know, passed away, but he was a great fighter from, from Massachusetts area. And, um, I ended up fighting his wife, who was a black belt. Oh at the my time. gosh! <laughs> so, so, how so did... that was my my first tournament experience. But you know, I, I really enjoyed it and and stuck with it. Were you just like were you hooked immediately after that? What so well, or or I, I I wasn't like you know like you know if I went there and kicked some serious butt and won, I probably would have been more hooked. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. But you know, it it was a goal, you know, of being able to be that first place winner and stuff. So, you know, I, I competed and things didn't really click until I was like, you know, high brown belt yeah, or even yeah, black yeah. belt, you know, I, it's when I, when I made my black belt, Karate Illustrated used to do the rankings and that's right. That's right. That's right. And, you know, I wanted to be number one in New England. Like I could see my name in the magazine. <laughs> and, so. yeah. Now that I, now that you're saying it, I remember it. Yes. Right. So I, I started, um, you know, we started hitting more tournaments because uh -huh. you could uh, get your points the more tournaments you went to. And and back then we were ranked with the men's, uh, not for fighting, but for form. So right. I like had Chuck Merriman and Brian Ritchie and Mike Bogdansky and all these, you know, legends in, in Kata in, in my, you know, division that I was trying to get more points then. So I, but I eventually, you know, got my number one and forms fighting and weapons in new england and amazing then wanted to you know hit the national circuit and from so, that's kind of where the, the 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 teaching came from you know i'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you i just want to just i i had I, I remember going up to new england to 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 a to mr merriman's tournament and and andre Tippett was there and i fought him in the finals mm -hmm. and you know, it was not easy. Like, I, actually, I was I was beating Andre Tip, Mr. Tippett, and then Chuck Merriman, like in between a point, came in and said something to Andre Tippett, and then he annihilated me. Like at some point, he picked me up with one hand and kicked me in the leg, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is like," and so, but like my experience of New England, like all of those people. And this is what I wanted to ask you, like, how is it that that place, like, Billy came from there, Billy Blanks came from there, uh, Chris Rappold came from there, another world champion, you world champion, like, all of these people, was it the Paul Mitchell team? What what was it about that, that area, or what was it about that group that produced so many great people? Well, I think you just had some really phenomenal martial art instructors like, uh -huh. you know, Chuck Merriman was in Connecticut and you had Billy Blanks in Massachusetts and he created some, you know, um, brought up some great fighters. Right. Um, and then you had uh, Joe Pina who. Right. Oh, right, 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 right. You know, so he's got like Pedro, but, I, you know, Pedro Xavier and Alberto Montron and, and the Brady, Brady brothers and just, you know, so many, um, I, I think we had so many tournaments going on and you know, when you're out there competing, it only makes you better every you weekend. Know? Right. There's like, yes. a, there was a, a, yes. a national level tournament up there. Wasn't there? Right. Yeah. Right. So there was just so many tournaments and so many good schools that everyone just kind of made each other better. I think, uh -huh. you know, I mean, and I would, before I was on the Atlantic team and teammates with Billy, 
even before then, I, I had gone to a school and did some training, you know, and he'd do workout. He'd have open mat sparring and people would just come and fight. And, uh, you know, you just make each other better, I think. Did you ever get a chance to spar with Billy? Oh, yes. What was yep. that like? What, I mean, every, everybody I've talked to says that he was amazing. He, I heard a story about that he could do a jump kick and touch, touch a kick a basketball hoop. Like he was that. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me. His athletic ability is phenomenal. I mean, phenomenal. You know, um, I think he would have been the best fighter in the world if his ability, you know, like if if, if he fought a little bit smarter sometimes, you know, uh -huh. like sometimes sometimes it would be like a, a tie match and, and everything's on the line and he would want to end the match with a cartwheel kick or with <laughs> some flying, right, 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 you know, right. and it's like, you're, you're fighting nasty Anderson or, or right. whoever right. Of, of that, you know, that's going to capitalize on any mistake you make, you know, like just get your point. You he know? wants to go out with a bang. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think he would have had a lot more um, wins under his belt if, if that was probably his downfall. You know, I mean, I don't know if you want to call it a downfall. He just wanted to, you know, I mean, I, that show. He's a showman. Yeah, yeah. You know? I, I can't blame him. Like, if I could do yes. it, I would do it. I would, I would try the cartwheel kick. Um, right. So, but when I when I fought him one time, I um, I scored a technique on him, and then and then two seconds later, when I had my leg up kicking. He swept my bottom leg. Oh my gosh! And then he caught me before I fell on the floor, and I'm like, "Oh my god, <laughs> what just happened?" <laughs> he he had some great uh, sweeping skills that he right. didn't see him use too much in tournaments because a lot of tournaments didn't allow it. But right. I used to do the AAU style, so he yep. had that he I, had that background. I know he was on the that world team with uh, Domingo Llanos and and Toki Hill. That right. Domingo, I guess, I guess, got robbed for first place. There was a whole big thing, and then Toki won the worlds that year. He's the first American to ever get a gold medal on that circuit, um, the Wuko circuit. Um, and I know he was on that team, and they, they, everybody on the traditional circuit was talk would talk about that team and Billy too. That he was amazing. Um, yes. So, so. I also understood that, uh, like, I remember watching his kid and that your husband was instrumental in, like, coaching a lot of those people, wasn't wasn't he? It was like, yes. what, what made him a great teacher? Like, what did, you, uh, what did you get from him? And, like, how was he able to kind of, like, influence all of these great fighters? And also, you have multiple world titles and forms as well. So, like, what was it about him? Well, I think he's a, a very motivational person, but also, you know, sometimes you get a, a someone that wants to coach you on the on the sidelines, and they keep want they keep telling you to do the technique that they love to do or what they would do in the ring. You know uh -huh, what I mean? And uh -huh. and you know, so he's able to see that you know, hey, I'm not the puncher. You know, I'm going to be out there kicking, and and so someone else is going to be more of a puncher or more of a defensive fighter or an, or an offensive fighter. So he knows, you know, what your strong points are. Right. And he doesn't, um, you know, tell you to do the technique that he would be doing in the ring in, in that situation. But he tells you what he knows that you're strong at and what technique you should use. And, um, you know, just very motivational and, and you know, definitely helped me a, a lot throughout the, throughout the years as far as being in my corner. Um, at, at one point I was on the Atlantic team and trans world oil team with, um, you know, people like Billy and Domingo and, and, uh, Linda Denley and, right. um, John Frenette and, you know, all these, uh, Kevin Thompson, all these great fighters. And then my husband was coaching, uh, team Paul Mitchell. Right. Right. And right. They had, they had just gotten the sponsorship and, you know, he had a group of young guys, you know, like. Steve uh, Babcock. Steve Babcock and Stingo or yeah. Paul Garcia. Yeah, yeah. Pedro Xavier, Mike Conroy. He had all these young guys, and they just got better and better and better until they actually beat the Atlantic team that I was on. Huh. And, you know, they ended up, um, Chuck Merriman, 
ended up um, Kevin Thompson and I were the top money winners on the team because we Kevin and I both did forms fighting and weapons. So right. we would get bonus money and prize money for three different divisions, even though we might not win as much as Billy Blanks or Linda Denley. We were winning in three categories, so right, we right. we were winning the most money. And you know, I was never a problem child on the team. I was always a very you know good <laughs> coming good, from strict good, parents. I bet you had to yeah. be. <laughs> yeah, so I was always very, uh, very a very good team person. And you know, it, Chuck Merriman ended up letting me go from the team. Uh, so you can be on Paul Mitchell. Well, that's what he's, he he said. You know, it's a little bit of a conflict of interest when your husband is coaching. Oh, the I team. understand. But it was right. it was never an issue until the team beat, beat Atlantic, <laughs> and then all of a sudden it became an issue. But but you know, God rest his as, soul. Yeah, yes, good guy, good guy, good guy, <laughs> great guy. But yeah, I was the first female on Team Paul Mitchell at that point. Right. And you know the rest was history after that. So I remember, I remember getting every black belt magazine and seeing you there and Team Paul Mitchell. Was that the first big sponsorship? Did it like w- was that a major thing, or was Atlantic and all of these other teams kind of bigger? Well, Atlantic was probably the biggest um, that we'll probably ever see. I mean, the amount of money that that team had, uh-huh. but it only lasted, you know. I don't even know if it was five years or whatever it was. Um, the whole du- duration of of the sponsorship. I mean, the, the sponsorship of Team Paul Mitchell is like thirty six. Or I don't even know. I it's it's in the high thirties. It's right. crazy. You know how long John Paul has been sponsoring this team. Right. So you know uh, the money that Atlantic had was much higher. And like every play, the team was a lot bigger, and you got money, you got paid to be at the tournament. You got you know, all your expenses, you got huh. extra bonus money for every first and second and third you took. But again, it didn't, you know, didn't last. Yeah. It's hard for those things to last, yeah. especially with such talent. You right. Know, there's a lot right. of, it. well, I don't, but Paul, Paul Mitchell has been the longest going sponsor in, in the sports uh-huh, history uh-huh. and it's still, still going. Is, is, is your husband still the coach of John Paul Mitchell? Yes, he is. Well, wow. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, he he's the head coach, and then you have Steve Babcock and right. uh, Chris Rappold, Damon right. Gilbert, and uh, Jackson Rudolph that help out with the uh, you know one takes care of the fighters, one takes care of the forms people, you know, so yes. they all take turns at what what events they go to to help coach the team and stuff. Because you know, my husband is uh, um, not traveling as much right. in his older years, so um, well, it's understandable. Yeah, Sean, yeah. like can. I want, I want to kind of pivot here and like, can you talk about your mindset? Like what, what goes through your mind to prepare for like, or prepared for the worlds or like when you were going on set in this, you know, TV series or like doing stunts for, for the karate kid, like how do you prepare yourself for those kinds of big moments? I guess just having that that positive mindset, um, you know, when I'm getting ready to perform on stage and there's thousands of people there. I mean, you know, you you can you can have keep having it go through your head like, oh my God, what if I what if I fall or what if right. I slip? How what a right. fool I'm gonna look like? You know what I mean? And if you think think that way, that's probably what's gonna happen. You know, right. you know. So I would always just try to be positive, like. You know, oh, well, with, there's so many people here, but if I nail when I nail it, it's gonna it's gonna be great. You know, it's gonna, gonna be a uh-huh. great feeling. Or, or visualizing fighting a certain person, or if I fought them before, kind of visualizing how I beat them the, the time before that, and and just seeing myself going through the form routine or the weapon routine or or my match, you know, um, without a hitch and just you know doing everything perfect. So, um, you know, that I would say that that's one way that I used to prepare for it. And, you know, I, I always, I, I like to tell the story to my students about, you know, mindset, how I was at a tournament one time and uh, I had a fight in a cold quest for the grand. Um, I think it was in the New England Open and she was from New York. I don't know if you remember I, her. I don't know who she is, but. She trained with Tony Morrison, I think. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, sure. so 
I saw him in an elevator in my friend's building once. He's like Gene Dunn, and I'm like, Mr. Morrison? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great guy. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen him in years, but, uh, you know, she, she was much bigger than I than I am, you know, much taller. And, uh-huh. and you know, she won the heavyweight division. And, and I kept say, saying to my husband, you know, like in between the day and the nighttime finals when I had to fight her for grand, I, I said, I, I feel like I know, you know, did I ever fight her before? And my husband's like, yeah, you fought her. And I'm like, well, what happened? He goes, you beat her, no problem. And I was like, oh, okay. So I, I went and had dinner and I was relaxed and, right. you know, didn't have a worry in the world. And I, I go out there and fight and it's a, it's a close match, but I end up pulling it out and beating her. And, you know, and then after the, the match, you know, I'm sitting down and my husband goes, oh, by the way, she kicked your, your butt last time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like... Oh, thanks for telling me. Yeah, right, right. He <laughs> played. Know? He he played that right, didn't he? Yo, he did. Yeah. He did. And yeah. I was like, I can't believe you did that to me. You know. Huh. Huh. <laughs> but so, it's it's you know I had that confidence and and you know that's all it takes. Half of it's more than half of it's what's in your head. What's in your head? Can I can I ask you? Did you, did you ever get nervous for any of these fights? I I, oh, I don't yes. want to put you on spot. I just I, I I'm interested because I think that students they'll listen, and I think people get nervous. I think people yeah. like and they and if 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 my if one of my heroes gets nervous and and she's she's like figuring it out. I want to know how that is. You know, I want to know what I can I can do to overcome you know, that sense for me. And I think it's just a valuable skill. So that's why I'm asking. Yes. Um, definitely get nervous. I probably almost every single time you get, you know, some, sometimes you get more nervous than other right. times. Depending but, on who it is or depending on the place or. Yeah. Depending on who it is uh-huh. or what's on the line, you uh-huh. know, uh-huh. like, like in Atlantic city, when I won, I won a gold in forms in, uh, weapons and I really wanted to win that third gold in fighting so yeah. like that mat, that last match I felt like so much pressure because I, I just wanted to accomplish what I had done in England winning the three golds because everybody said it was a fluke thing and no one could ever no, do it, it wasn't. again. No it wasn't. Certainly wasn't. And so I wanted to come back and prove everyone wrong right. and and so like I, you know like things like that would make me more nervous because there was seemed it was more on the line for me but it's so interesting that that's the thing i was at you know yeah. that's the thing i remember like i was yep. there it was so powerful thank you for listening to the gentle art podcast please share rate and review and if you have any questions or you'd like to reach out please contact us at the gentle art podcast at gmail.com or contact us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter or the gentle art podcast.com. <laughs>